Susan Norris. I'm the official artist sculptor for Boy Scouts of America, as well as the first female artist. Yeah, it's, it's an honor to be the first sculptor for, for any organization, and especially for Boy Scouts of America. Well, because I really love the organization. I, like, I, I really like and admire the organization, its longevity, the values it teaches, um, and I just am an honor, honor to be part of it in that capacity, doing what I love. I would like to be remembered for my talent, which is very, which would, which is nice, but I really have nothing to do with the talent part of it. That I feel that's God given. But I'd like to be remembered for the contributions I've made through my artwork in various ways. The pleasure it gives and uh, the inspiration it gives to others that want to pursue the same thing I do with their creativity. I began my art career as a very young, well, I'll call it a career, but as a very young child, I was always drawing and making things out of whatever materials I could find, both three-dimensional and two-dimensional. Horses were my favorite subject, so I drew lots and lots and lots of horses. And then when I finally got a horse, I started drawing other things, but animals were primarily my love and still are. Um, I've, I have moved into doing portrait work and, and uh, figurative sculpture as well. Um, I started out as a painter mostly and two-dimensional artist, graphic artist, pencil and paint and things like that, wildlife, and uh, then moved on to landscapes and then I moved on to sculpture, three-dimensional work, and I probably, you know, stuck to doing sculpture for quite a while, steadily, and then I, I, you know, I didn't paint for a while, and now I'm kind of doing both, which is really fun, because if I get tired of one thing, I just go on to the other. And I'm in, it's broadening my horizons, and I'm always looking for new techniques and things to do. The first sculpture I ever did was when I was in fourth grade, and it was a rabbit. We had an art class, and it was a sculpture of a rabbit. Fourth or fifth grade, and I still have it. I still have it. I have it because my mother saved it. My career as a professional artist began when I was in my 20s. Uh, actually, I maybe it began when I was 19. I did my first juried art show, which means you have to be uh, selected by a panel of pro other professional artists to participate if your work is good enough. So I was, that was my first art show, and I sold some pieces, and they were just drawings of animals, and then I expanded into more color work, wildlife. Did, I did a lot of birds at that time. I, I, I did a lot of work for Ducks Unlimited, um, participated in many of their fundraising things and would donate to them. Uh, many artists got their start doing things like that with conservation groups. And I focused on wildlife primarily and sporting art, meaning hunting scenes, hunting dogs, did a lot of hunting dogs and did a lot. My work focused and was primarily commission work at that time, doing hunting dogs and pets as well, but mostly hunting dogs, labs, retrievers, things like that. The first sculpture I sold as a professional was a sculpture of a gentleman who had, who was deceased. His wife, his widow, hired me to do a bronze of him, uh, full size, uh, when I say full size, full figure. It stood about 14 inches tall, and he was with a hunting dog, and she wanted that to, to you know, for his memory, just a sculpture of him. So I had no reference to go by. I just went, I mean, he was not alive at the time, so I had to use photographs that she supplied me to do his portrait. That was the first sculpture I sold, and, and I hadn't done any sculpture prior to that in many, many years, so I just jumped in and said, yes, yes, I can do that, because she had purchased 
paintings for me pr previous. So she said, can you do this in sculpture? I said, yeah, not really knowing. He's like, okay, I think I can do this. <laughs> so I did it. Besides bronze work, uh, which starts off as usually a oil-based clay sculpture that is not designed to be permanent. It's designed to have a mold made of it and then be cast in bronze. I also work in ceramic clay, which are one of a kind. Uh, those pieces are done, they're, it's a wet clay, it, it dries and then it's fired like you would have something in your kitchen like a cup or a plate that's fired clay. So it's a one of a kind, it's not uh, something that's reproduced in a mold. My relationship with the Boy Scouts started when I, I believe it was seven years ago, when I was looking for some work and I hadn't done sculpture for a little while and I wanted to get back into it and I went to Philmont and got a tour and uh, asked if they needed anything and went into the Seton Museum and at that time they were talking, well, yeah, someday we're gonna do something with this, you know, we're gonna expand it. And I had never been to Philmont, let alone been in the Seton Museum and then I saw Seton's portrait and the paintings he had done and kind of looked around and it just, it, it just something I don't, I can't explain it. It was a life-changing moment, but I thought this is the person I need to research and I did. And two weeks later, I went back and talked to John Clark, who was the general manager at the time and showed him some conceptual drawings and he directed me to talk to a few other people about that because my idea was to do life-size sculptures of of Seton and at that time um, Lobo which was part of Seton's story and a year later I had a contract to do three large sculptures of Seton a Boy Scout in 1915 era uniform and Lobo the wolf and that's how my relationship with Boy Scouts of America got started and from there, I met, you know, several people through, through these last six, seven years and uh, got asked to apply for the position of the national artist. My humorous sculptures are an aside and a, different from my other work because I've done primarily realism, traditional realism, uh, paintings of animals, paintings of, um, you know, landscapes. I like to do those as well. But the humorous animals, I don't really have to, I, I don't have to, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to, all the anatomy doesn't have to be perfect. And I like to, to, to have, to laugh. I like other people to laugh. And so when I do them, it's, it's relaxing to me. I just kind of can have fun with it. I don't have to worry about, oh, is, you know, the proportions exactly right. I can use their natural form and exaggerate things that they do uh, naturally that these animals do and, and have them doing human things such as the ram that's golfing or the, the wild pig that's got a shotgun <laughs> drinking whiskey, <laughs> that kind of thing. My favorite, hum my favorite humorous sculpture that I've done would be the war, the uh, wild, no see, it's a, it's not a warthog, it's a, well, I like the warthog too. It's a wild boar and he's got a shotgun and he's got a flask of some sort of alcohol and a cigar and a game bag and he's kind of portly and he's, his name's Filthy McNasty, that would be my favorite one. What inspired me to do that to create Filthy McNasty was I was at the Loveland Sculpture Show and I had a large sculpture of a ram, a black-faced Scottish ram with a golf club. And it was five foot tall. And this gentleman came in and was laughing and he said, oh, we were just in Scotland. And we went to this bar called Filthy McNasty's. And I said immediately, I've got to make a character around that name. That's what inspired me. So my recent sculpture, my most recent sculpture that I've done, uh, that I'm very proud of, is a 
larger than life sculpture of Charles Alexander Eastman, also known as Ohiesa. He was the physician at Wounded Knee. He was Lakota. Okay, I was commissioned to do a sculpture of him as a teenager playing stickball, which is also now known as lacrosse, because the Native Americans invented that game. And his band, his group, won the game, and that Ohiesa means the winner. So he got that name when he was a teenager. Later on, he adopted his name of Charles Alexander Eastman from his relatives that he went to go live with. Um, so this piece is going in front of a leadership center in Fort Snelling, Minnesota, a leadership, BSA leadership center. It's gonna be installed in front of it, um, or in a courtyard, I guess. But what I love so much about the sculpture, uh, it has a lot of movement, and that's what everybody comments on, is the movement and the face. The face. And what's most important to me, and I guess I'm very the most pleased about, is that the family, the relatives, would be the great nephew, I believe, was one of them, of Ohiesa. I've been working with on this sculpture, and as far as you know, how they want it, and and what he should look like, and I really only had photographs of of him as a uh, when he was in medical school. So I kind of had he was in his 20s, so I had to make him look young. And the fact that the family was so pleased with the result that it looked like he would look like that was the biggest compliment I could ever get. So. I'm very, very excited to have this piece, to see it come to fruition, to be finished. It's at the foundry right now being cast. So that's my latest. If a person would like to contact me to talk more about my artwork or if they're interested in a piece of my artwork, they can contact me by going to my website, which is susannorrisartworks.com. That's artworks, plural or they can call me at 575-770-5725, or they can email me at susannorrisartworks at gmail.com. <laughs>